Tady. Let the record reflect. We have reconvened with all members present. Rob Catanello is absent excused. As we rise for Pledge of Allegiance, I will ask you to remain standing for a moment of silence. Remain standing. A moment of silence for Michael Cipolletti, Sr., lifelong Madison resident who, who died this past weekend. Uh, many will, who grew up in Madison will know him as uh, owner of Chippies, second generation. His parents opened up Chippies in 1942. And Chippies, along with probably uh, Henry Schwarman's deli, put Madison on the Sloppy Joe map for uh, northern New Jersey. Uh, he also owned the uh, Last Stop Tavern, longtime member of the North Stars Club, and of course a friend of many in Madison. A moment of silence for Michael Cipolletti. Thank you. Right, may I have a uh, motion for the executive minutes of February 22nd, 2016? So moved. Second. Already have been discussed in executive, so roll call vote, please. Mr. Landrigan? Bob? Here. Here. Yes. Uh, yes. No, yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Here. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Rowe? Yes. All right. Ooh. All right, a motion for the regular minutes of uh, February 22nd. So I moved. Move the, oh, I second the minutes. <laughs> Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Yes, is all right. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, on this uh, beautiful uh, day. Not only did we lose an hour of sleep over the weekend, we now have a nice, nasty, wet March day. But um, spring is coming. But we have our fingers crossed with the long-range forecast for Saturday that it's uh, a rain event. As we know, as the Nixle alert that went out uh, Saturday and uh, announcements in many places that New Jersey transit strike was averted, but uh, had the strike gone on, which obviously would have been not a good thing, but Madison was ready because we have some great de dedicated staff putting together a backup plan, which was having the buses ready to run uh, this morning from the train station if they were going to be needed. So Bob Landrigan, thank you for your work with that. Chief Datchison, Jim Sanderson, Erica Cruz, all getting the word out. And of course, the person who came up with the idea and put it together uh, in the days after Superstorm Sandy, Fran, as uh, Ray Cody has called her, Boardman Bus Company Boardman, that she really knows how to organize the buses and get it going. So I uh, want to thank everyone for making that happen. Um, and you know, our governor uh, mentioned that there will not be any fare hikes in the short term, which is uh, good news, but I would suggest that hopefully by June 30th we get permanent funding source for the transportation fund so that we can support our mass transit system and get the cars off the road and get people uh, and passengers on the trains. So that's my message to Trenton for today. Uh, employee of the month for March is pa Patricia Gallagher of the Electric Utility Department for her steady, reliable, and consistent service, as well as efficiency when working with other departments, especially purchasing HR department. So I want to thank uh, Patricia for all her work. We have... Uh, Two proclamations. Don't think anyone is here for colorectal uh, awareness. Just a few things. I'll, I won't read the whole uh, uh, proclamation, but we do these proclamations to remind the public about the importance of being uh, regular cancer checks, that you can save your life. Col colorectal cancer is the third most commonly diagnosed cancer and the second most common cause of cancer deaths for men and women in the United States. 
and colorectal cancer affects men and women equally, and it's estimated there'll be over 140,000 new cases with a death rate of over 50,000. Every three minutes, someone is diagnosed with colorectal cancer, and every 10 minutes, someone dies from colorectal cancer. Four cancers account for 52% of new cancer diagnostics in Morris and Somerset counties, and colon cancer accounts for 10% of all cancer cases and deaths in both counties. In Morris County, 52 individuals are diagnosed with cancer each week. 17 die of cancer each week. And the annual incidence has increased. Only 39% of colorectal cancer patients have their cancers de detected at early stage, and we know the importance of having that detected at early stage. The survival rate of individuals who have early stage colorectal cancer is 90% which is why there are over a million colon cancer survivors in the United States. However, 5% of those diagnosed later will have the cancer spread to other organs. And if the majority of people in age 50 and over were screened regularly for colorectal cancer, the death rate of disease could plummet by 70%. Colorectal cancer is preventable, treatable, and beatable in most cases. So now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, Mayor of Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, Proclaim the month of March 2016 as Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month and urge all citizens to get regular screenings to save lives. And Christy Hottie, please come on up. Welcome. And we have a proclamation for the American Red Cross Month, March 2016. Whereas in the borough of Madison, we have a long history of helping our neighbors in need. American Red Cross Month is a special time to recognize and thank our everyday heroes, those who selfless Red Cross volunteers and donors who give of their time and resources to help community members. And whereas these heroes help families find shelter after home fire, they give blood to help trauma victims and cancer patients. They deliver comfort items to the military members of the hospital. They use their life-saving skills to save someone from a heart attack, drowning, or choking. They enable children around the globe to be vaccinated from measles and rubella. And whereas the American Red Cross depends on local heroes to deliver help and hope during the disaster, we applaud our heroes here in the borough of Madison who give of themselves to assist their neighbors when they need a helping hand. And whereas, across the country, around the world, American Red Cross responds to disasters big and small. In fact, every eight minutes, the organization responds to a community disaster, providing shelter, food, emo emotional support, and other necessities to those affected. It collects 40% of the nation's blood supply, provides 24-hour support to military members, veterans, and their families, teaches millions life-saving skills such as lifeguarding and CPR, and through its Restoring Family Links program, connects family members separated by crisis, conflict, or migration. And whereas, we dedicate the month of March to all those who support the American Red Cross mission to prevent and alleviate human suffering in the face of emergency. Our community depends on the American Red Cross, which relies, relies on donations of time, money, and blood to fulfill its humanitarian mission. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, the mayor of the borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby proclaim March 2016 as American Red Cross Month. I encourage all Americans to support this organization and its noble humanitarian mission. Congratulations. This is always an honor to be back in Madison to say thank you to all of you for acknowledging the work that the American Red Cross does because I'm really here representing our volunteers. And 90% of our workforce is volunteers. It's pretty phenomenal when you think about it. We just shipped three people off today to the floods in the southern parts of this country, one of which is a, a Morris County resident who works on the only shelter strike team uh, in, in our state. So he's on call quite a bit. But these volunteers give selfishly, and they give their time, and they are really unheralded. I think people just assume the Red Cross will be there, and it's because we have such wonderful people to back that. So when we talk about uh, the other proclamation about cancer patients, 
Um, we are still the nation's largest supplier of blood, and those that need blood oftentimes are cancer patients. So you have a wonderful monthly blood drive right here across the street at the Ambulance Corps. They're great partners, so please encourage everyone to keep giving blood. Um, we desperately need it in New Jersey. So thank you all very, very much. This is my favorite month, and we really appreciate this honor. Thank you, and pass our thanks on to all your volunteers. Hey, and on to reports from committees, utilities. Mr. Wolkowitz. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the water utility uh, completed its samples that are mandated by the state for uh, total chloroform, E. coli, and volatile organic compounds. They also tested for lead and copper. And given what's been in the news recently, I'm sure you'll all be happy to know that we tested negative for lead. Um, it was a busy week for the Water Department. They had 36 requests for locating and marking underground utilities. They did quite a few water shutoffs because of construction work. Um, they also had to replace uh, some, uh, hose, I'm sorry, some um, piping to uh, Tillman Hall in um, Tillman House in Drew University. It was a bit of a problem there. Um, and they did chlorinated treatments for wells E, C, and D. You may recall uh, we talked about well E, and unfortunately it is still offline. There's a meeting that will be going on with the borough engineer, Bob Vogel, and the engineers from the companies involved, and the water department. And uh, we're going to uh, get that done ASAP. And then finally, the new generator for Welly was delivered. That's a key part of what needs to be done there. And it was set on a concrete pad, and all it needs is a little electricity to get it running. Now, as for electricity, the electric department began pole transfers on Madison <coughs> Avenue. They had a bit of a problem at the St. Vincent School. Apparently, underground service was damaged as a result of con some contractor's work. And so they had to disconnect it and then reconstruct it and finally energize it again. But that all went well in the end. And uh, th there was a meeting which we hope will continue to bear fruit in the future. Uh, the attendees included, among other people, uh, Mike Piano, Jim Matino, Ray Cody, and Mayor Conley, and they met with representatives of JCP&L to discuss one of our favorite topics, reliability of both of the 34 kilovolt feeder lines to Madison. Meeting was viewed as both productive and highly informative. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Landrigan, if you can do uh, finance and borough clerk, and I don't know if you have a backup for health, or uh, Rob didn't give, give me okay. anything for health. All right, okay. so you and stay my, with your strength then. All right, and then my comments uh, in regards to finance and borough clerk, that'll come at the, B, at the budget introduction. All right, very good. Public safety, Ms. Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. Reporting from the fire department, during the month of February, the fire department responded to 110 calls for assistance. Um, and it's broken down as follows. There's 33 EMS uh, calls, 29 general alarms, 15 still alarms, 33 investigations. The fire department also conducted two in-house training drills. Five volunteer firefighters attended and completed a 24-hour hands-on vehicle ex extrication course at the Morris County Fire Academy. Two career firefighters completed a required course and passed their state exam and are now certified for level one fire instructors. This class was also given by the Morris County Fire Academy. They did have one volunteer firefighter resign, so um, hopefully we'll, we'll find some more volunteers as um, the chief has been doing a good job of that. Um, from the uh, police department, um, 
Uh, Chief uh, Dachison is pleased to announce that uh, Patrolman Bart Glob has been nominated for the 2015 Mothers Against Drunk Driving Award and will be honored at a ceremony on June 16, 2016 at Rutgers University. This is the second year in a row that Patrolman Glob has won this honor. In 2015, he was responsible for removing 13 impaired drivers from our streets, making our community much safer. Um, Madison Police also took possession of a new digital fingerprint system, which is required for the upcoming bail reform law. This system is replacing our um, outdated and failing unit. The old equi equipment was donated to Pemberton, New Jersey Police Department, where lack, who are lacking the digital technology for the bail reform requirement. Um, the chief also wanted um, me to uh, kind of talk about um, New Jersey trooper killed by a crash. Um, and it's a, a plea for actually for drivers to pay more attention to what's going on. Um, there is a state law that says that you should move over. It's a move over law. And it requires drivers to slow down and change lanes when approaching a stopped emergency vehicle. It's unfortunate, but we just had um, another young man um, die because somebody just didn't do that move over. And uh, so just be very observant, be very careful. Um, that these policemen go out and um, one of their jobs, which seems easy enough, is to, uh, um, to stop someone or help someone who is having a problem on the side of the road. So uh, just be very diligent. Thank you. Thank you. And Community Affairs, Ms. Bailey. Oh, thank you, Mayor. From the Downtown Development um, Committee, the Downtown Development um, Commission, the Chamber and the Rotary, thank you, uh, everyone, the event sponsors, participating local restaurants, dedicated volunteers, and all who came out for the Taste of Madison last Monday night. It was a terrific event. The food was great. The drink was great. The event was well attended, and everybody had a very nice time. May Day will be on Saturday, May 7th this year. The May Day t-shirt art contest has concluded and a winner will be announced shortly. There were over 130 young artists who participated. And please consider making a donation or signing up to volunteer for May Day. Uh, you can find the information on the Downtown Commission's page on Rosenet. The banners for the um, Downtown Commission and Maka Sidewalk Gallery are in the process of being distributed to the artists. They will be ready for hanging in late spring, and we're looking forward to another great year. From recreation, um, the Little League Parade is scheduled for April 16th at noon, and all spring teams uh, have begun practicing. From the Madison Senior Center, the final version of the Grotta survey, this is a, a, a survey of 55 and over residents from both Chatham and Madison, um, question, you know, asking them about um, what kind of services we provide and, and what we can do better is in both written form and um, through SurveyMonkey on the computer. And publicity distribution and compila uh, compilation of results are being discussed by the group, which is now called the Tri-Town 55 Plus. Then RSVP has reinstituted their volunteer recognition event, and that's when people call people at home who um, don't get out much. It's their telephone reassurance program, and there will be this um, event on March 31st to recognize the volunteers at the Saris Inn. And um, also the tax assistance program that the senior uh, um, citizen sponsor, uh, they've had 93 people to date, have used the service, which has six counselors available to help with IRS, New Jersey, and PTR filings. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And Public Works and Engineering, Mr. Burrow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first from the Public Works Department, the Road Department continues to work on pothole repairs. We're also prepping all the fields for the spring sports, and residents should be aware that collection of yard waste will again begin this week. Um, in terms of engineering from the road, for roads, the uh, 2016 Road Reconstruction Program has a public bid opening on March 31st. Uh, separate plans and specifications are being assembled for the Prospect Street 
reconstruction work. It will be submitted to the New Jersey DOT and ready for advertisement in April. Uh, TILCON is preparing quotes for the mill and overlay work uh, for a variety of streets. We should be able to proceed with that work in late April or early May. Uh, quotes for the surveys that we'll need for the roads we're going to tackle next year have been received from three vendors and contracts will be awarded by the end of this month. Uh, quotes for producing the downtown paper blocks have also been received and contracts for those materials will be awarded by the end of the month. And finally, quotes for the preventative maintenance on traffic signals have been received and we expect to award those contracts by the end of this month. Sewers, a proposal has been received from Kleinfelder to prepare specifications uh, for inspection and pressure grounding process. Uh, this process has the ability to survey and repair the majority of our municipal sanitary sewers within the next five years. Uh, once the specs are received, the phase of the project uh, can be bid, awarded, and commence later this summer. Uh, the staff is also working on a plan and specification for a relief storm sewer in Elmer Street while obtaining uh, soil borings over the next month to complete the construction bid documents for that project. Once completed, the project will be placed on a bid schedule in advance of Morris County's paving work, which is scheduled for Central Avenue next year. Uh, from the Water Department, <coughs> the final report of the Madison Water System will be complete by the end of this month. It will include an updated water model showing calculated impacts of extended period pumping on the system. Uh, the, currently, the report indicates the, system's, the system is in good condition and supports continued uh, capital investments over time to be sure the system is maintained and functional for current and future use. Uh, the utility committee will be getting that at its next meeting and then it will be made public. Uh, bids for the water main replacement work that's associated with the local road reconstruction work will be received at the end of March. Additional work for the Central Avenue um, project is being completed this spring, so the project will also be ready for bid this summer. Um, ben already updated us on Well E. Uh, vendors, uh, AC Schultz has performed repetitive pumping at Well E this month to remove any remaining turbidity in the groundwater for the, from the redevelopment work that was done last year. The redevelopment work appears to have improved the well capacity significantly. Uh, the water department anticipates that it can be used for public purposes by the end of April, but some of that's still pending, some of the meetings that are coming up. Uh, the parks, finally, the Bailey Ellard Site Remediation Phase 2 project has a public bid opening for April 14th. We anticipate construction work in late September. Quotes for installation work on the softball scoreboard have been received and contracts awarded to a variety of vendors. We hope to complete that work in April. Quotes to pave the access road for the Madison Rec Complex will be completed as part of the 2016 uh, mill and overlay work. And finally, from the building department, just a quick summary from 2015. Uh, that department saw an increase of over 10% in permits issued uh, over 2014 and an increase in revenue of over $50,000. Uh, this year, they're running ahead of last year, and we still have the GBR project coming up. Uh, and I think, Ray, we expect the demolition of that building to start this week. It started today. It started today. Another milestone. And that is the end of that That's report. Terrific. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I guess I Demolition started today. I've got to get my brick from my sixth grade classroom. But, uh, <laughs> all right, moving on to the introduction of the 2016 budget and the tax resolution. I uh, call up Ordinance 10 2016 for first reading. I ask the borough clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance 10. 2016 calendar year 2016 ordinance to establish the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank per NJSA 40A colon 4-45 colon 14. Mayor, I move ordinance 10-2016. I second it. Council discussion. <clears throat> um, yeah, I would just ask the borough um, CFO just to describe really for what's happening here because we just got a copy before the meeting started. Where did this go? <clears throat> thank you, thank you, Mayor. Um, Cat Bank Ordinance is established, as Patty had mentioned, under New Jersey Statutes Annotated 40A, uh, 4, uh, colon 4, 45, 14. It is one of the longest sections of the budget, um, mm. budget law, and it permits uh, the council to cap, uh, to bank um, excess appropriations that you do not spend in one calendar year, create a bank, for two-year periods, so if down the road a large expense came in or something came up, you could <clears> see the cap bank. There are two uh, there are two caps that we are constrained by: a levy cap and an appropriation cap. 
and um, this allows for the appropriation limits to be exceeded. So the levy cap is on the tax side, that's the revenue side. The appropriation <coughs> cap is on the spending side. So both sides of the budget document are constrained. Um, I, you know, I'm happy to talk about this in detail. I don't know if we want to talk about it this evening, um, but it's, it's really quite a complex law and a complex ordinance, but this allows us to basically um, cap up to $646,000 um, of spending to reserve in future years. It's a rolling cap, so two years ago cap went away and now we have last year and this year and it basically keeps rolling along. Okay. So what is this, I'm sorry. I'm, and just to clarify again, um, is this gives us the flexibility in case uh, the rain hits. Um, we have been doing this on an annual basis but have not been have not you needed to use the cap in I forget how many good number of years. I looked back and I couldn't find a time when we had to use the cap. That's okay. Adopted. Right. So, so it gives us flexibility, but we have not had to take advantage of it. Hmm. Pat, you had to? Yeah, so I was just going to ask, what is the, after we approve this and add this in, what will be the tar current total of the cap bank that we have that we could use? 46273. No, that's for this year, but what's the, oh, the net, um, the total? I'll get that for you, Pat. I believe it was an extra $100,000 in previous years. So. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. All right. May clerk please read the statement related to the budget introduction. Upon introduction and adoption of the 2016 budget and tax resolution will be published by the, in summary in the Madison Eagle on March 24, 2016, with a public hearing date set for April 11, 2016, at 8 p.m. in the Council Chamber, Hartley Dodge Memorial, 50 Kings Road, at which time and place all interested individuals will have an opportunity to be heard and there will be consideration for final adoption. A copy of the budget was introduced, the copy of the budget as introduced, will be filed with the Madison Public Library and the County Library for public review. Resolution 94-2016, Resolution of the Borough of Madison, adopting the 2016 Budget and Tax Resolution. May I have a motion? Mayor, I move Resolution 94-2016. I second it. Council discussion. Bob, okay. you... uh, as part of the discussion, I'll just do a brief introduction, kind of go over the highlights. But before I do that, um, I just want, there's a number of individuals and organizations that need to be thanked. Uh, most of all, uh, CFO Jim Burnett, when you think that this is his first year as CFO, he not only took over the reins from someone who had been there for years, um, he melded that, the former CFO's practice with those guidelines established by the strategic planning committees. Uh, the budget process this year, as far as I'm concerned, has been more transparent, more on the mark uh, than I've seen in a long time. Uh, a great deal of thanks goes to Jim. I know he's put in a lot of hard work, as well as the rest of the administration, uh, the department heads who really took a pencil to the paper and really trimmed it and kept all the spending in line, and finally, and not the least, to the strategic planning committees. Mm -hmm. They set very good guidelines uh, against which we worked this budget, and even if we didn't meet the guidelines exactly, what they did was they provided a framework for which we could measure our performance, and when we didn't hit it, we could talk about why. So thank you to the strategic planning committees, each and every one of them. In regards to the budget this year, I'll just go over some highlights now, because this is an introduction. The final vote will come in April. Um, the highlights are it's a very small property tax on, on the municipal side. It's only a 1.5% increase. Uh, we don't yet know what the county is going to do, nor the Board of Education. That will get lumped on top of that. But from the municipal side, it's a 1.5% increase. No services have changed. All our services are fully funded. That includes leaf pickup, uh, garbage, whatever. It's all included. No changes there. Uh, increased capital funding. Now, we've all heard people talk about capital this, capital that. To put it in real terms, we had a parade of neighborhoods come in here and say their roads needed to be repaired. We're doing that and we're going to continue doing that until all the roads are what we feel are in proper order, 
We're looking at our infrastructure. We're taking care of repairs to that as well. That's a major undertaking, and it's been funded. Uh, all cost increases have been absorbed, and that includes sewage, pension costs, and debt service. That's a big chunk of a lot of expenses that a lot of municipalities can't even conceive of covering. We've done that. Um, we've paid down the MRC debt, and I don't need to go through that. That's been talked about over and over again. That's been paid down. And finally, and most importantly, we've maintained our AAA credit rating because as much as I hate borrowing, and you could call it, um, you know, uh, debt funding, whatever you want to call it, borrowing is borrowing. And when you don't have to do it, it's great. And when you have to do it, the less interest you pay is better. And it's a necessity, you know, with the joint meeting could be one example. AAA credit rating, we pay less interest. That's a good thing. So, Jim, everybody, thank you very much for all the hard work you've done. You've put us in a very, very strong uh, position. Well done, Jim. Other uh, comments, discussion from the council? Okay. Pat? Uh, well, I'll make a more complete statement. I'm just going to be voting no tonight. I've already explained ad nauseum what my concerns are. And um, I'll, as I said, I'll give a more full statement when we vote on the final budget. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussions? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Landrigan? Oh, I'm, no, it's okay. I'm sorry. Pat, oh, sorry. Was sorry, a, Ben. It was an editorial comment. I was just <laughs> going to say that having been involved in the budgets over the last four years, this one is very much in the spirit of the last three. The last three have served us very well. I expect the same will happen here. I am sensitive to concerns about reliance on electric utility, uh, the surplus to fund our capital needs, and I, I, I feel that's something that needs to be addressed and addressed very seriously, but away from the budget discussion. The budget discussion is kind of a static thing that we do each year, and what we're talking about in terms of revenue generation and additional savings is much more of a long-term discussion. But I think this council needs to do that and needs to start having very serious discussions about what are we going to do three, four, five years out. Because what we certainly don't want is a repeat of what happened to our town in 2007 and 8. And uh, uh, certainly I would not want it to be on my watch. Thank you. Any other comments? Before? Now we're all call vote. Thank you. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? No. Hey, communication petitions. Any communications or petitions? None received, Mayor. All right. And now this is our first of two invitations for discussion from the public. This is limited to items that are on our discussion agenda or <clears throat> resolutions that are on the consent agenda. So the items being discussed under uh, number 14, Museum of Early Trades and Crafts are doing a presentation related to the capital improvements on the James Library. And also the time limit, uh, uh, number two, is the time limit parking on Belmont and Washington Drive uh, or any of the resolutions. So if you want to comment on those two items or any resolution, please step forward to the lectern. State your name, your address, and then state the agenda item you're speaking to and keep your comments to three minutes or less. Anyone wishing to speak? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And now we're on to agenda discussion number one, Museum of Early Trades and Crafts presentation. Deb, Tom, welcome. and as it goes, as it will go forward. So this is a, um, the James Library building, which is actually... Um, if you want, um, we need the microphone or we can give you the wireless of you. There we go. I mean, I'm not loud enough? It's <laughs> not what I hear from home. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the James Library building, we have a six-year restoration project, um, which was presented to the council, I believe, in 2012. Um, so first, let's talk about the museum itself. The Museum of Early Trades and Crafts, which is housed there, 
um, is a nationally recognized um, nonprofit museum, a member of the National Association of, of Reciprocal Museums, um, State and Local History Association, and the American Alliance for Museums. Um, our mission is education, as you can see from this picture, conservation, interpretation of history, and focusing on New Jersey. Um, and we reach um, 11,000 people each year, and I think that is, an, um, actually, that's an old number. That's from uh, 2014. Um, a lot more people. So let's talk about the building itself. Um, we all know that the James Library building um, was built um, in 1899, um, a gift to Madison by um, Willis James, um, a very unique style of Richardsonian Romanesque revival. Um, there are not too many buildings like this in the country. Um, it was our library um, from 1900 until 1967. And um, at that time, when the library moved to its present um, home, the building was empty for two years. And um, Edgar Land, who was the museum's founder, approached the borough and said, you know, can we use this for the museum? And in 1969, it became the home of the museum. Um, in 19, the early 1990s, there was a major renovation. Um, you may remember the um, conservatory was installed, elevator, and um, the entire um, inside of the building was restored to, its, um, to what you see today. It is listed on both the state and the national registers of historic places. Um, that is uh, unique um, in this town. And it is a visual anchor. Uh, the first thing you see when you drive into downtown Madison from the west is the um, Museum of Early Trades and Crafts and the James Library building. So why are we? Um, looking to have some, some uh, repairs done in this building. This is the problem. Um, over the years, water, water's, you know, as we see outside, water's a problem for, for many uh, of these uh, old structures. Um, it was patched throughout the years. It did not alleviate the problems. Um, there's deteriorating interior brick and mortar, and the pro improperly installed gutters on the large slate roof. I mean, you have a huge, huge, huge roof. You have these itty bitty tiny gutters. Um, not the best um, solution. Um, and then the flashing and caulking you can see. So what happened was all this water came in, came down, came underneath and started to come up and um, really had, had a, an incredible effect um, on the building. In addition, um, you know, the railroad, when this building was built, the railroad was at ground level. Um, so when the railroad moved, when New Jersey Transit came in and elevated it, it moved it closer to the building. Um, if you see how close the actual embankment is to the building, it's kind of a little scary. Um, and that constant motion also has a great impact on this beautiful building. <coughs> so this is the process um, to um, address this problem. Um, in 2011, the museum itself, the board and staff uh, got together. We obtained a $34,000 grant to conduct a study to um, look at a historic preservation study to see what we could do to alleviate this problem. Um, the, every grant has a match. We raised the money ourselves to, to match this grant. Um, we did all of the study. That was completed in 2011. In 2012, <clears throat> we did another grant to actually look at the recommendations by uh, HBA of Historic Preservation. Um, again, we got another grant. We um, also matched the funds. So what, we came, what came out of this was a projected six-year um, project. Um, Phases 1A and 2A, and don't ask me why there's A at the end of it. This is the um, Historic Builders Association. So they have been completed. Or actually, phase 2A is just a, about 5% less. We have to um, still put the Kemper roof on the um, main entrance to the building. <coughs> but they are ostensibly pretty much completed. Um, phase 3, for which we are looking for open space funding again, is going to begin fall 2016 phase 4A and then 5A and B um, in the future. Um, phase 1A, which was the first, the first phase of this project, that kind of addressed the immediate uh, problems. Um, the water was really a, an issue, and this kind of addressed all of that, um, restored the really um, badly rotting rafters. Um, if you remember, the museum has these huge, this huge ceiling that comes down, and the rafters were um, all rotted, um, and raking out the uh, masonry um, and doing some other work with the gutters. Um, phase 2A, which we're com just about complete now, um, same thing. We repointed the, um, the 
um, the masonry walls, reconfigured gutters, um, replaced the entrance roofs. But the two things that, um, the one thing that we did also is, um, you know, we have these beautiful fleur-de-lis finials on top that are terracotta. One of them was badly cracked, um, in danger of falling on someone. Both of those were removed. They're sitting down in our collections room right now, and they're going to be um, replaced um, and reinstalled at some point. So 2016, we're hoping to redo those exterior walls on Main Street and on um, Green Village Road and replicate and reinstall the tower finials. 2017, we hope to do the west wall, which abuts the railroad, and then hopefully going forward in 2018-19, replace that large slate roof. This is a huge project, so we will you know, go along as we, as we can. Um, the funding works, the funding is um, mostly from Morris County Historic Preservation Trust. Um, they, um, we write a grant, they give us 80% um, of the project, and then the matching needs to come from the grantee. So if there's a $100,000 project, 80 from the county, 20 from the, um, the grantee. Um, Madison Open Space and Historic Preservation Trust has funding to match um, this 20% um, this match. Um, they pay for the, the construct. It covers the construction, documents, bidding, negotiation, project supervision, and the museum. Um, we provide the overall project management, and we have a staff who spends 50% of their time actually managing this um, enormous um, project. So this is just another way of looking at it. Um, 2016, we're going to we. Um, going to ask for open space funding um, of 125,000 um, and the total project, the, the um, construction and the professional services is 375. Um, borough give, I mean the county gives us 80% of that and then the borough funds or the open space funds um, is the 20% of the 75,000 for the match, the documents, bidding, negotiation time and then the project management time. Um, and that's where the $125,000 comes from. So Can I ask a question? A I, I was looking at this. I still don't understand how those numbers add up. What's the total cost of the project? $375,000. The county is going to give you three hundred. dollars 80%. They give 80%. Of $300,000? Or, or three, of three seventy-five. So that's three hundred, and we're giving you one hundred and twenty-five. dollars So that's four and a quarter. And they didn't get full amount. So, this is what we're asking for. So what happens is um, this is the, pro the project estimation. We, we have to have the hundred, we have to have the match. We have to have the match on the full project before we can even go to the county. And, and the, the county will not fund the documents, bidding, and negotiation, and, and the project manager. So those sit outside of that 375. So it's 375 plus the 50 is the uh, project to actual project total. I understand all that, but it's still $425,000, which is an extra $50,000. Where does the $50,000 go if the project comes in on budget? This is the project, um, well, this is exactly the amount of money, the 375. Um, I'm not sure I'm, I'm sure what you're asking. You're getting $300,000 from the county. Right. You're getting $125,000 from Madison. That's $425,000. You're saying the project total is $375,000. Plus, plus the uh, documents and plus the project management. The construction project is three seventy-five. dollars So what's the total cost of the project? So for, for, let's back it out the other way. So, so the project is four twenty-five. dollars okay. You take out 50000 that the county will not cover and will not recognize as part of their matching grant. So now you're down to okay. three seventy-five, dollars and now you take that the uh, 80 20 split and that's where you get the 75 300 you know we can only go to the county we can only talk to the county about the actual um, construction you know, construction part of it so that's why that's there I understand that but as a person who looks at budgets the, the numbers just say it add up so I think in the future if you guys restructured it so you yeah. had the total project cost is X and here's where the different funding sure. is coming from it would be easier to total it all up and it would make sense understand yeah, yeah. thank okay. you that would make sense um, so, so that's basically, so do you have any other questions about the, about the funding? Um, go back over anything, but this is basically the, the, um, the end result. And we do have to um, have in, in hand 
the $125,000 match before we could go to the county and the county um, grant we're prepare preparing right now and it's due March 31st. Is um, that actually, as I said, the magnificent building and so this is um, something that we all want to preserve. One other question going back to the, um, the roof part, which is, yes. seems to be the more recent addition because although it says this was originally six phases, when it was first brought to the council, before I joined, it was actually a four-phase project. Are, how certain are you guys of that cost? I mean, that seems to be a fairly large wild card. I mean, have you had a real um, the, the numbers that rehabilitation using, engineer take a look at that and, yes. and say that a million dollars is going to cover it? The numbers that we're using were the projections originally um, back in 2011-12. So, yes, we would have to look at that again <coughs> before we actually went to the project. That's why it was split up. That's why the project is split up for the roof between the two phases because of the fact that we know it's a, it's a large project and the expense is going to be quite high. Yeah. But it was in that, it was in that original project. I know, but the original mm -hmm. project, again, was expected four rounds of funding at about the $125,000 level. Mm -hmm. It's now at least six le rounds, and I still wonder how solid the last two rounds are going to be, or is it going to be a seventh or an eighth? or a ninth or a tenth round. I mean, is this going to end up costing us a million dollars by the time we're done? I sincerely hope not. Um, I, I, I know that, um, you know, the, pro the building is in dire need of all of these uh, repairs. Mm -hmm. um, so these are, these are basically um, the projections that we had gotten from the construction, and, and <clears> I think that it's a fair question. I think that we really need to look at that again and have another assessment about what needs to be done and going forward how much that's going to cost and how, you know, where, where that's going to take us. And I think that may be a discussion we should have with the, um, the architect. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. And so we have the um, ordinance that has its hearing shortly. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, Tom. Time, time limit parking on Belmont Avenue and Washington Drive. Uh, I, I can talk about it, Mayor. Basically, what's proposed is a four-hour parking time limit on both sides of the street, Monday to Friday only, for Belmont Avenue and Washington Drive to uh, reduce the amount of parkers who utilize the trail, the, the train, and tend to park their cars in residential neighborhoods and also facilitate the flow of emergency vehicles through the area. So that's the intent, and the police department's recommending it for approval. And currently, we, def we have a definite problem on Belmont where you have people parking on both sides at the uh, western end, the Prospect Street end. Washington, Ave Washington Drive I, is not a current problem. It's anticipating that um, th that will be the next one. I, as I've discussed with the chief, the, you know, as, as this radius gets further out, there's more and more options, and so the, we'll dil dilute the on the potential on the street parking if it does happen, but we don't, don't anticipate Pomeroy getting parking, but, uh, and as I've often said, if there's a partner out there that would want to help with a parking structure close to the train station so we can accommodate uh, people outside of Madison, yeah, I'd love to talk with them. Pat? Yeah, I was gonna say, because we just, we just keep addressing the symptom, not the problem. I mean, you, you spoke eloquently earlier about the fact that we need a source for the transportation of trust fund because we want to get more people in the trains. Yeah. Unfortunately for us, if there were more people taking the train, we'd have even a bigger off-site yeah. parking problem. So I think, you know, we really need to start to think about how are we can address the long-term need for more parking at this station because we're, this is just a stopgap measure till the next yeah. group yeah. of people come to us. And until we get to the point where we're actually prohibiting parking in front of the people's houses who are w driving to the train station, that we're going to be doing this on a regular basis. I, I agree. And if we... Ray, just clarification. Did you say Monday through Friday or... Monday through Friday. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Only. Okay. Do we, do we suspend it for holidays and other events where it's not a problem for commuters? Well, the police have the discretion not to enforce. Okay. And they usually just use common sense. Thank you. I will... I think we can pass on. I, I don't think it's a has been an issue, but we should definitely pass on that message. That hopefully, okay, in case someone someone on Belmont is having a Christmas party or the whole family over for Christmas dinner, we'd hate to have that happen. All right. So this is Ordinance 11, which is listed for introduction. Thank you. <laughs> We're now on to Ordinance for Hearing. Will the clerk please read the following statement? 
The ordinance scheduled for the hearing was introduced by title and passed on first reading at a regular meeting of the council held on Monday, February 22, 2016, was posted and filed according to law, and copies were made available to the general public requesting same. I call up ordinances for second reading. I ask the clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 8, 2016, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating 125000 from the Municipal Open Space Trust Fund for restoration and repair of the James Library building. I open the hearing. Anyone in the audience wishing to comment on Ordinance 8, please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Ordin uh, Mayor, I move Ordinance 8-2016. I'll second. Council discussion? Um, so I voted against the introduction. Um, I'm going to vote in favor of this tonight. I did get the information that Councilman Bailey provided. I did go back and listen to the hearing last year, <coughs> which, by the way, we need to replace that microphone. It's atrocious. Um, you can only hear half of what's going on up there. Um, but I will say that if, um, how should I put this, if I'm sitting here next year and we come back with not solid numbers for the last two years, I will vote against it because I think you know, we owe the taxpayers of Madison more certainty on what we're spending out of the Open Space Trust Fund, and it's getting to be very expensive for this project. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. I declare Ordinance 8. 2016 adopted and finally passed and I ask the clerk to publish notice there of the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 9, 2016. Ordinance 9, 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $35,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the replacement of the air conditioning system in the public safety complex server room. I open the hearing for Ordinance 9. Anyone wish to comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 9-2016. Second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Ms. Mr. Rowe? Yes. I declare Ordinance 9, 2016 adopted and finally passed and I ask the clerk to publish notice of the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. And now we're on to the second invitation for discussion from the public. You may comment on anything. And again, please keep your comments to three minutes or less. Step up to the lectern, state your name and your address, and write the same on the clipboard. Anyone wishing to comment, please raise your hand or step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. Introduction your ordinances. Will the clerk please read the statement? Ordinance scheduled for the first reading have a hearing date set for March 28, 2016 and will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up ordinances for the first reading and ask the borough clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 11, 2016, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, amending Chapter 185.32 of the Borough Code to include time limit restrictions for parking on Belmont Avenue in Washington Drive. Mayor, I move Ordinance 11-2016. Second. Any further council discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rao? Yes. Ordinance 12, 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $30,000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund to purchase a pad mount transformer for E. Well pump station. I move ordinance 11, I'm sorry, 12 2016. Second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rao? Yes. Ordinance 13 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $105,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of a 16 foot lawn mower. Mr. Mayor, move Ordinance 13 2016. Second. Any council discussion? For the public, this is a, an actual tractor. It says lawn mower, but it's. <laughs> 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 yes. 
More more on steroids. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Landrigan. Yes. Mrs. Fatale. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Walkowitz. Yes. Mr. Rowe. Yes. Consent agenda resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolution, resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move uh, resolutions R95-2016 through R106-2016. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan. Yes. Mrs. Vitale. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Uh, yes to all, but I abstain from R106. Mr. Walkowitz. Yes. Mr. Rao. Yes. Okay, there is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. Okay. Public safety, $43,693.56. Health and public assistance, $8,105. Eight thousand one hundred five fifty-six. Public Works and Engineering, three hundred sixty-three thousand nine hundred seven fifty-two. Community Affairs, sixty-three thousand three hundred seventy-one zero four. Finance and Borough Clerk, three hundred twenty-six thousand eight hundred twelve sixty-four. And Utilities, one million eight hundred ninety thousand eight hundred thirty-six thirteen. A total of two million. $696,726.45. I'll move the vouchers. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Under new business, I wish to make the following appointments, not requiring council confirmation. To the Historic Preservation Commission, Karen Jesse, Woodland Road, for unexpired term through December 31st, 2019. And for the Environmental Commission, the following appointments. Amy Terrashano for term ending December 31st, 2016. Mary Ellen Coppola for term ending December 31st, 2017. And Trina Malik for the alternate number one position, term ending December 31st, 2018. And with that, we're done. I move, we adjourn. John, Thank keep you. it up. <laughs> John, eloquent, and I like the way you keep everything moving. I do my best. Yep. Good luck. I say, time to go to the county. It's time to text it on. I said, how's it going? I understand. Maybe we'll, we'll text, text John and say, John's, uh, got John's done. done. He's got John's time. done. He's on his He's way. He's on his way. We'll, we'll text John. Come on, I'm on my way. You're not going there, are you? Well, if I can help you. They're still going. <laughs>